I have read A Christmas Carol every year for more than 50 years, facilitated discussions about the story, and have even written a novel loosely structured after Dickens's first Christmas book. And I have seen at least 20 adaptations. The Alistair Sim version, the Albert Finney musical, the Muppet musical, and my sentimental favorite, Mr. Magoo's Broadway musical adaptation. Dickens is famous for many things, but A Christmas Carol is his most famous and beloved story of all. And what a story it is. It was a wild success upon publication, drew crowds when Dickens read it in public, and still packs in audiences every holiday season at high schools, little theaters, and professional theaters around the world. This book is full of famous lines or sentences. Marley was dead to begin with. Bah, humbunk. Are there no prisons? And there never was such a goose. But perhaps the most important words in the novel, the core of what Dickens called the Carroll philosophy, comes early on when Scrooge is visited on Christmas Eve by his nephew, Fred, the only child of Scrooge's younger sister, Fan, now many years dead. Fred has come to visit his uncle to invite him to Christmas Day dinner. Dickens immediately establishes that their discussion is a rivalry that perhaps both enjoy as sparring partners. But after Scrooge calls Christmas a humbug for the second time, Fred gets serious a moment and says, There are many things from which I might have derived good, by which I have not profited, I dare say, returned the nephew. Christmas among the rest. But I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time when it has come round. Apart from the veneration due to its sacred name and origin, if anything belonging to it can be apart from that, as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely and to think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave and not another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And therefore, uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good, and I say... God bless it. After being visited by his partner spirit and the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and yet to come, Scrooge sees the error of his ways and redeems himself by helping out the Cratchit family and spending Christmas Day with his nephew and friends, proving that the spirit of Christmas, whether in its religious or secular meaning, can save us all. We have need these days for a kind, forgiving, and charitable time. Dickens's view of the holiday was more humanistic than religious. He preferred the drink known as smoking bishop to an actual bishop. But he was a believer in the general goodness of the human race. Mankind was my business, Marley's ghost tells Scrooge. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. At the end of the story, the narrator tells us that Scrooge has learned his lesson and that he knew how to keep Christmas well 
if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. Happy holidays from all of us at the Friends of the Dickens Project.